Council, and uh, thank you for inviting me to give an update from uh, the province of Ontario and to speak with you about upcoming uh, priorities for this council and, and the town. Um, it's uh, a distinct pleasure to be here with you today and uh, to continually serve as your member of provincial parliament. I want to thank you, uh, Mayor Cleveland and Council, uh, for the very proactive approach as of late with the province, leveraging opportunities like Association of Municipalities of Ontario in August and uh, pursuing a very aggressive agenda with my uh, fellow ministerial counterparts. It keeps me busy, which is good, that's my job, and, uh, and I appreciate it advancing uh, the needs of our community. So uh, with that, I'll just uh, dive right in. It's been a busy last uh, year, a fiscal, fiscal year uh, for the province, especially here. Um, in, I wanna focus on a few key themes. One, community, uh, infrastructure, healthcare, seniors, and economic development. So five uh, brief themes I'm gonna run through quickly uh, with all of you, starting with community. Uh, after all, if we don't build strong communities, uh, we don't have anywhere to live at all. So we uh, announced today our Rural Economic Development Police Tech Accelerator at Venture 13 with all of you. Uh, policing is so important. Keeping our community safe is, uh, is a priority. And so investing with the Police Tech Accelerator, uh, an important priority of the province, and I appreciate the work of Chief Andergraff and the Cobra Police Service for us on that. Our land trust, uh, protecting our natural environment, supporting the Northumberland Land Trust uh, with a $50,000 investment which builds on our Greenlands Conservation Partnership Program, which is the largest investment in Ontario's history to protect green spaces. So working with land trust, and I know there are a number of Cobra residents uh, active with the land trust, our Habitat for Humanity, our skills uh, development uh, fund building skills to build homes, uh, taking a number of, of, of hard to place in our community who have been in and out um, at times of, uh, of, of in and out of social services with, uh, with the province who are now working, getting a skill set and working with that incredible team at Habitat for Humanity uh, to build homes uh, because when you have a job in the trades, you've got a career for life. Uh, supporting them with a $665,000 investment, which is building a Baltimore project just north of town. Our Community and Training and Development Center uh, training for careers in healthcare and social services, $776,000 investment to help build career sets in childcare, ECE. Um, you see the why here today, um, you know, they'll tell you how important it is uh, to expand capacity in early childhood education, in healthcare, in nursing, in PSW services. Um, working uh, within community uh, to, to support social services, I know Cobra has disproportionately felt um, the challenges that we're seeing across Ontario, across Canada, uh, with the opioid crisis, with uh, the challenges with respect to encampments. Um, and so we've worked with our service provider uh, to not only make uh, the largest investment in, in the campus history, uh, but, but uh, double that investment in 2024, uh, cumulatively with uh, just over five million uh, in social services, uh, relief funding, Recognizing that we're handcuffed at times by those those relationships, I know we've spoken with uh, ministers and others around a more flexible model and more competitive model uh, to fund innovative uh, opportunities. And when I say innovative, I think to some of the groups in the Halton region that we funded who fund modular um, homes and have done so on a rapid basis. Uh, they too uh, were building these homes in three days um, at a cost of approximately 100,000 per unit. Um, and I found out that the upper tier had uh, refused to accept them, CSA certified, um, and they were shipping them to Nunavut. Uh, we've since rectified that, and now they're kind of online within that community, because when you get someone a home and a house and a roof over their head, we can get them into wraparound supports and jobs and skill sets for a career. I'm moving on to infrastructure. Um, the province is laser focused on building for tomorrow, not yesterday. Um, and we have to feel that here in, in, in rural communities like ours. One of the biggest challenges for building long-term care, as I've said, uh, we have our, our nonprofit uh, two years delayed. We have uh, the challenges in Cobra with the, the long-term care home that we've licensed for new beds, expanded beds, almost three years ago now, but because of capacity issues, have been unable to break ground. Same thing goes with Port Hope for other challenging uh, reasons, but that we licensed three years ago for new beds hasn't broken ground. 
Um, so for infrastructure uh, funding, we announced, of course, this week the Housing Mainland Water System Fund. The reason uh, for the slight delay this year, as you know, Investigate Canada Infrastructure Program was federal government, province, municipality, third, third, third. third. The federal government has refused to sign into an agreement with Ontario, um, so we've just gone alone on this, and hence the Housing Neighborhood Water System Fund of $25 million to support growth and cope. Um, the OSIF funding, Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund, which is annualized funding to support your infrastructure. Just to give you an example, 2018 when I was elected, 400000 Today it's annualized funding of over $1.5 million, uh, fixing the funding formula. And a big shout out to our community who came up with the solution for CAO Candace White in Norwood, who is now CAO in Port Hope, was the one who recognized that that funding formula was flawed and disproportionately uh, did a disservice to rural communities. Seniors, um, you know, we stand on the shoulders of the generation before us who built uh, our communities. They deserve to be supported, and, and this town, and, and shout out to the staff here, have done a great job um, in, in the Seniors Community Grant, uh, supporting uh, active seniors in our community. Uh, with successive grants uh, this year, over $70,000 for seniors programming in our community at the Corporate Community Center. Uh, that's been uh, remarkable. I've even been out, had a chance to get out, uh, I think it was last year, uh, to one of the programs, and it's, it's, it's excellent. It's keeping people active, uh, stimulated, mental health and wellness is, is key, isolation as well. Um, and so it, keeping seniors active and, and you know, removing those, those ice, it, it can get lonely if you're alone um, in, you know, apartment, uh, in retirement, and so keeping that funding active in our community is a priority. Healthcare, um, again, important for all of us. This hospital, um, you know, had uh, traditionally been underfunded in their base funding. Um, we, we saw building on the, the largest ever base funding increase uh, three years ago, another uh, historic increase of 10% in base funding, uh, bringing uh, the cumulative investment 24-25 to over $6 million. Um, from uh, from 1.8 uh, years prior, and so that's a significant investment uh, in the health of the hospital, uh, which does a, a great job in our community. And that builds why it's important to build that capacity. We're building um, residency spots uh, for uh, for people to train to become doctors and nurses. Uh, publicly funded uh, spots. Uh, a beneficiary of that is Loyalist. They have a great simulation program. So we're making those investments uh, in our community, and Loyalist is expanding in our community, offering nursing programming um, in Port Hope, which is which is a newly announced program. So building on that, making those investments in Ed's house, we expanded to 10-bed hospice um, with an investment of just shy of a million dollars, uh, bringing that hospice to full capacity now uh, with 10 rooms. Uh, they do great work at Ed's house. Finally, on economic development, um, and this is where I really want to work with Coburg in the year ahead, uh, the Eastern Ontario Development Fund is probably our best tool for economic development. And in this town, we just think to uh, the craft uh, plant and closure and now Benico packaging that are there. Um, this was a, an empty facility in, in my early days and now um, boasts uh, one, of the, one of the largest now, um, uh, one of the largest uh, manufacturing companies for uh, corrugated and, and labeling. And that, uh, they received a, an investment from Eastern Ontario Development Fund that's created more jobs, that's helped them expand. Uh, custom plastics as well, uh, they do the NHL uh, whistle uh, here in our, our home community. Um, they do a fantastic job at, at custom plastics and we made an investment there that's bringing on, uh, that's bringing on a new line and expanding on the work they're doing. They're bringing on some robotics, which, which is bringing new jobs. Um, and all of this funding is tied to meeting job metrics, jobs for Ontarians, um, and that's a key criteria. And um, they're bringing on robotics, which is elevating uh, the average salary at the plant, and they're bringing good paying jobs into our community. Um, so I'll end with, um, with an ask, because I see it's on the agenda uh, today. Um, you know, we've been laser focused on realizing the potential of the Brookside property. Our focus has, as a province has been on disposing of our surplus assets that are in Port Hope, the MTO patrol yards, Brookside here. Um, it was held uh, for negotiations with the upper tier for over a year. Um, no formal offer was given to the province, so we have been very anxious to dispose of the property, uh, to put it into the, the hands of the private sector, and that, you know, weak as taxpayers alone, 
cannot build everything in our communities. We need public-private partnerships. We need to leverage the expertise of the private sector. We need uh, you control the planning process so you can guide the kind of vision you want to see on that property. Uh, but we need uh, the private sector engaged. And so um, Town of Coburg has been very successful in getting funding from the province. And our ask is that you support uh, various uh, servicing or studies that will help bring uh, our vision for that land to fruition faster. Because we need a partnership at the lower tier level to work, to realize the potential. We're seeing it all over. Uh, St. Thomas for the Volkswagen plant. That town moved heaven and earth to work to attract that investment. And Tennessee was a, co a competitor. Um, and when it boils down to it, um, you know, investors want to know that they have active partners in all levels of government. Um, and it's a competitive world. And we can either sit on the sidelines and let process and questions um, you know, delay us, or we can be a player in the race for investment and in the race for uh, attracting good paying jobs and opportunities to our community. And so my ask of you is to, is to work aggressively on uh, realizing those various studies uh, so that we can get shovels in ground as of yesterday on that property. Uh, so with that, I look forward to the year ahead. I think it's gonna be an exciting uh, year ahead of working uh, with all of you. I look forward um, to the servicing um, and the growth in uh, the eastern portion of our, of, our, uh, of our town and working with you on economic development to attract uh, good paying jobs, meaningful jobs to our community and appreciate uh, you having me here and asking me to present on a brief update from the province. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Minister. Uh, thank you for your support since day one. Uh, I think that we don't know anything. Um, well, I guess my question is with the study, um, how can they come to us and approach us with that? I, th I, th I think they have. Um, mm -hmm. I think they have. And, uh, and you know, I think, uh, again, when, when we look, I mean, at making sites job site ready, I, I challenged all of our lower tiers with the province's job site challenge. And that was a challenge from our economic development minister saying, identify land and various encumbrances on that land to bring it to job site ready. Because when we're talking and we're competing, we're the only province in North America, we're the only sub-sovereign jurisdiction that has six of the major automobile manufacturers in, 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 you know, in our jurisdiction. And they didn't just appear because you know, we spun a wheel and got lucky. They appeared because we worked to make identify sites, identify site servicing requirements, and get them ready, um, job, job ready. And so if you say to a proponent, you know, you've got the land, and now here's a long list of, of hurdles you have to jump, or you have an opportunity that we as a town have identified this site, and I think, you know, from from your, your from previous council to today, um, we have been united in, in the Imagine Brookside exercise in, in soliciting the public's input on what they want to see. So it's been no secret that we want to realize the potential there. So over those last two years, my question is, what have we done at a local level to, to identify servicing encumbrances? So would that be water, wastewater challenges, hydroelectric, you know, hydro capacity, um, and, and a lot of that is done at the local level, not by the province. Uh, it is done at a local level because that's where a lot of these answers lie. I mean, we don't, we don't, you know, you have a board seat at your local utility company, a lakefront, we don't. Um, so identifying where those challenges are is what I'm saying. I think, you know, I think that gets the site job ready um, and gets it development ready. And I, I think, you know, we've, you've seen the theme from the province. Let's move, let's identify these underutilized lands. Let's realize the potential it's better taxes for you in the end, and it's job creation and potentially, uh, you know, homes. It's potentially uh, preserving uh, the heritage structure there that right now nobody can enjoy. It sits there derelict. Um, and, you know, I think the thing that I've seen challenging for heritage properties has been everybody's got a vision, but nobody's got a dollar to put into it. And so if we're going to realize the potential of that, let's engage the private sector, let's uh, get site servicing, and control how it's developed through the planning process. Follow up for sure, and then we'll move back there. Um, if we do approve this tonight, um, I guess my question would be how long from now or tonight would be from the sale of, of the property? Do you have a ballpark? In yeah, mind? My, my understanding is closing uh, conditions are November 13th. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you, Mayor Clayton.
Cleveland through you to Minister Puccini and just want to echo you are a very hardworking ambassador on behalf of our community. Thank you for that. I mean, just the, the infrastructure modernization funding alone uh, since 2018. A question on Brookside, because that's the original mover in the last term of council to want to see this site move from a detention center to a community campus, you know, mixed use uh, housing and all that. And I, I agree with you, we need to move on getting it site ready and developing it. Our community wants to see that. Um, in sitting on the OSIM board, the Ontario Small Urban Municipality Board, we've had conversations with Minister Klander about, you know, the province, and I appreciate that the province is trying to dispose of unused assets, um, but then the taxpayer or the private developer that has to turn around and, and purchase it. Uh, so my understanding is the listing price for Brookside is around 10 million. So I'm genuinely just curious if you can help me understand um, if the province owns the land, is going to make a private sale for it at a, at a hefty price tag. The province is the owner of the land, so we have land, for example, of Tannery. We would have to get them site ready if we wanted to move forward with that. So if the province is the owner of the land, um, one would think that you as the landowner would get the site ready, or is there an opportunity in the sale of Brookside at 10 million? Our job site ready costs not recouped uh, in, that, in, that, in that sale. Yeah, good, good question. Um, the so the documents shared with this uh, with with staff in the town um, when we made the announcement to dispose of the surplus asset indicated a series of line down costs that the province will incur from facilitating duty to consult obligations to holding it and all of the holding costs over the year we held it waiting for a potential upper or lower tier to put up a hand and submit an offer um, we held all of those costs which were into the millions so we are already. You know the feeling is that we've put in uh, dollars uh, to this. I think you know we you referenced Tannery and others. Look, I mean that that's a site that you can and, and I would encourage you to to do. The bottom line is you haven't, and we are identifying. Um, we have identified Brookside as a site that the province. We have a series of assets that the province has all, all across the province that that were underutilized. In this case, uh, we've better you move the youth and we have fewer youth in care, which is a good thing. And, you know, behind bars. And to support five youth there, the, the costs per head were, were staggering. And so now they've been moved to the McMurtry Center where they're better, better cared for. Um, and realizing uh, that potential, which is perfectly situated right within the urban boundaries of Coburg. Um, you know, I think, I would just say in closing, I think it's a partnership. We're a team, right? You've never been shy to put your hand up when you want help from your, your provincial partners. And now I stand before you as a partner saying, you know, these are small studies that, that you are better positioned to do, that you can move on faster. And I think, you know, uh, we have ministries that, that have to look after 440 municipalities. So we just were very successful uh, for 25 million for servicing. Um, th there are other municipalities lower tier that were not successful. Um, and that's a very difficult message I have to carry. You had a strong application, you were shovel ready, you deserved to get that funding and you scored high on the independent assessment of these properties. I, as you can imagine, we're all busy and we have to make priority decisions. I can't keep going to the minister over and over and over again. Um, you know, she's now rightly looking to challenges in Brighton, uh, challenges in Port Hope, Clarington, Autonomy, South Monaghan, and I have to use my capacity as MPP to now advocate for them. And so what I'm saying in the spirit of partnership is I think you coming to bear for those studies to help get that site job ready faster uh, would, would be well received in the spirit of, of realizing the potential of this land. Noted, thank you, uh, Minister. I do appreciate the time noting that we do 